What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking about skipping dog. A lot of you guys have been asking lately for a dock skipping video and today I'm going to cover the baits, the gear, everything to help you guys learn how to skip baits better. You know, skipping docks, skipping tree branches is one of my favorite things to do. You know, there's so many different baits you can skip and when you can put a bait and you can take it and put it where you want it, where others can't, that's going to help you guys put more fish in the boat. So right off the bat, one of the, one of the baits that's probably the easiest to skip is going to be a stick bait, you know, a five inch stick bait. If you want to learn how to skip, start with a spinning rod. You don't have to worry about back, backlashes, you don't have to worry about bird's nest, any of that type of stuff. And you can spend a lot of time perfecting your casts. The first thing that you want to do, you want to keep your your cast nice and parallel to the water. You don't want to come from the top down. You kind of want to come all the way low. You know, skipping, just like when you were a kid and you were at the river or the lake and you were skipping rocks across the lake, you know, you get low and you skip that thing as hard as you can to get it, get that momentum to skip across the water. You don't throw straight down into the water. So the lower the angle, the lower the trajectory, the better. So, come down, keep your bait real low to the water. For this, I like a, a, a shorter rod, you know, a 610, seven foot spinning. You keep that bait real parallel to the water. And you can put that bait all the way to that back piling. You know, for me in the summertime, typically that's where I get most of my bites. That far corner, that farthest piling, that farthest area away from the the front of the dock is typically where I get the bigger bites. So when you can take a bait like that and put it where you want, you're guaranteed to put more fish in the boat. So the cast, again, it doesn't have to be super hard. You just want to keep it low and parallel to the water. So this little five inch stick bait, when it, when it hits and skips, uh, it just kind of carries that momentum up underneath that dock. Now, once I get the bait in there, I'm just gonna let it fall. Semi slack line, let it fall. Now, the benefit of skipping, you're getting a real soft entry, you're a real quiet, you're not spooking the fish. Another key thing about dock skipping is boat positioning. You know, if you're right up on the dock, that's gonna hurt you. The farther back you get away from the dock, the better of an angle you can get down underneath. You know, if I was 10 feet up on that dock, the angle to get up underneath is going to be a lot more distinct, a lot more sharp, and it's going to be harder to get that bait. So the farther you can get away from the dock and still reach your target, the better. You know, another really popular bait, another bait that I really like to skip is going to be a jig. Now specifically, it's going to be an arky style jig, something with Something with that flatter head. Again, when you're at that lake, when, when you're a kid and you're at the lake and you're picking up a good skipping rock, you're looking for the flattest, uh, most even rock to really cup that water and get it skipping. Same thing with a jig. If you can get that arky style head, it has more of that rounded flat top on it. It's going to help you skip. Uh, as far as casting rods, I like again six foot to seven two or six ten to seven two. Uh, again, the shorter the rod, the shorter the rod. The easier it is to get that that underhand cast, that underhand roll cast. You keep your rod tip down, you come right across the water and get that bait moving up underneath the dock. I'll let it fall, a couple hops, and then bring it in and move on to the next piling. Again, I've talked about it in the past, fishing docks, you want to work from inside out so the closest uh, object to you, the closest piling to you, and then work farther back. As far as bait casters, you know, it takes a lot of practice so you don't backlash and bird's nest quite a bit. As far as settings, I like to keep my, 
my uh, my braking system pretty much as loose as possible. So the the spool tension right here, I'm gonna keep it loose, just like I would on every other reel. But what I'm gonna do on my actual internal braking system, I'm gonna, this actually, this is the Corrado 70, it's got a dial on the outside. I'm gonna keep it somewhere between three and four. What that does, that limits the spool RPMs and it helps from backlashing if you do skip and the bait catches, you don't want your reel to blow up. Again, come, come down, get that bait in there. When skipping a jig, some of my favorite trailers, uh, like the Rage Chunk or a Horny Toad, something like that, it's gonna be a little bit more of a, a flat surface that actually helps get that bait up and skip it and keeps it on the surface. But just like every video, down below in the video description, I'll link some of my favorite uh, skipping baits, some of my favorite jig trailers, some of my favorite swim baits. You know, for me, it's gonna be like a 3 8 ounce jig, half ounce jig. You start getting too heavy and it's harder to skip. If you can get it to skip, it'll carry the momentum better. But for me, 3 8 half ounce is gonna be the way to go. Now let's talk about swim baits. When you can start putting a swim bait or a bigger bait up where others can't, that's where you're gonna catch your giants. That's where you're gonna catch your PBs um, and just have great days of fishing. When you can take a bait this big and put it where those fish aren't seeing it on a, on a normal basis, that's gonna help you guys out tremendously. Again, this is a swim bait rod. So you, tech, you, you typically need heavier gear. This is gonna be a 795, so a seven foot nine five power. But again, I'm gonna do that roll cast. I'm gonna start low, I'm gonna keep that, that trajectory, that angle as low as possible. I'm gonna start my skip out here. I'm not trying to skip it right at the dock. I want it to skip, 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 and then get up underneath the dock. It's gonna, that's gonna to lead to a quieter entry, and it's just gonna make that skip more fluid and less chance of backlashing. Again, when you're skipping, I'm not looking right here. I'm looking at my target. I'm looking through my target where I want that bait to go. So again, I started that skip about five feet off the bow of my boat. It skipped four or five times up underneath that dock. I let it fall to the bottom. Now I'm just going to creep it out. Do a couple more casts for you guys. So keep it low. I'm gonna come down right here. I'm gonna start my skip right about here, about five feet off the bow of the boat, about five feet out to the right, and I'm gonna try and aim for that back left piling. You can see, if you can take a bait of this size, or any size for that matter, and put it where others can't, you're gonna catch more fish. So again, it's all about angle. It's not about how hard or how soft you throw it. It's about getting that good skip. You know, there's a, there's a couple, uh, couple baits that I really like skipping. I already talked about the Senko, the stick bait. I talked about the jig, talked about the swim bait, but there's also a buzz bait. There's a couple buzz baits on the market that when paired with the right uh, trailer, you can get that buzz bait to skip up underneath those docks. And now you have a top water, uh, a buzz bait where you're getting it where those fish have never seen a top water or buzz bait like that before. Again, just like every video, I'll link some of the baits down there below in the description, but you guys dock skipping, it can seem overwhelming. It can seem very um, frustrating with the amount of backlashes and stuff you can get. But if you have the right gear and you practice, you practice that, that low entry, that low uh, trajectory. Now you can grab a bait and practice in your driveway too, you know, on the grass, something like that. But if you can put a bait where others can't, you're just gonna catch more fish. It's, it's plain and simple. So the right gear, the right technique, uh, again, the reel. I keep the spool tension as loose as possible when there's a little bit of little bit of play in the spool. The outside braking system 
I'll keep between three or four. You can adjust that on the fly. You know, if you're casting into the wind or where there's more ripple on the water, you can adjust that on the fly. Uh, play around with your gear, but go out and practice. Uh, another key tip, right here, I'm casting about 15 yards. If you guys don't wanna blow up your entire spool, make a cast the correct distance. Okay, take a piece of electrical tape and put it over your line right here and then reel it up. What that's going to do, if you do blow up your reel or you do backlash, that's the deepest that that backlash is going to go. You're not going to mess up your whole spool if you're uh, you know, fishing expensive fluoro or something like that. You're not going to mess up your, whole, your entire spool. So there you guys have it. That is Dock Skipping 101. A fairly simple video, but if you take those techniques, you take that advice, you guys will simply put more fish in the boat. When you can put the bait where others can't, it's just all in your favor. If you guys have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment section. If you guys like this video, remember to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. We're doing three videos a week. We appreciate you guys. Have a good one.